let's begin. So last time um, I taught you how to tell somebody to do something. How do you tell someone when you want to do something? And I talked about four ways you can start a sentence. And um, these are the four ways you can start a sentence when you want to tell someone to do something. So the first one is you should, then you have you need to, and then you can start the sentence with you have to, and then you can also say you must. Okay, so these are four ways. Um, I also told you that these four ways um, differ slightly um, in the tone or intonation and the intention. Um, so for example, um, to make a full sentence, I will add a verb and a noun or a pronoun. Um, so the full sentence will be you should plus a verb uh, plus a noun or a pronoun. So for example, you should see a doctor. Okay. So if you say some tell somebody you should see a doctor um it's more like an advice um it's very relaxed advice it's a suggestion um so if you said to me i'm not i haven't been feeling well for maybe two days i would say you should see a doctor uh maybe you should see a doctor it doesn't sound like it could be serious but um I, my advice is maybe you should see a doctor. Now, if you told me you had been feeling unwell for three, four days, I would probably say you need to see a doctor. Um, I mean, it sounds like there is something wrong. I recommend, I think it's better for you um, if you saw a doctor. So you need to see a doctor. A little bit stronger, but still not strong. You still have a choice. Now, if you told me you had been feeling unwell for a week, I would probably say to you, you have to see a doctor. It sounds like it could be serious. Um, a, a week of feeling unwell is not good. You have to see a doctor. Um, you still have a small choice if you will do it or you want to wait for another day or two to see if you feel any better, but um, you have to, okay? And then the last one, if you were feeling ill for more than a week, um, I would probably say you must see a doctor. This sounds serious. Um, you must, you don't have a choice, okay? If you don't go, I will take you there myself. Okay, so that's the difference um, in, the, uh, in the meaning. Um, so you've got less strong relaxed all the way down to the strongest one where you don't have a choice and you must see a doctor, okay? So um, just a little bit of a warning there for you. Um, I will give you some situations where uh, somebody might say one thing to you, but they actually mean something else. Um, I mean, happens, people do that. Um, I think because British people are a very polite nation, um, they might say something in one way, uh, in a very easy, what sounds like a relaxed way, um, to not not to offend you, um, but they actually mean to be strong. Um, for example, um, say you started a new job, and one of the girls or boys from the office um, said to you, um, when you finish drinking your morning coffee, you should wash your cup and put it away. Um, it just means that there is no mess in the office and we all do that so please do that. Um, even though they say you should wash your coffee cup and put it away, they actually mean you have to or you must. Um, they're just trying to be polite but if you didn't do that they would probably be upset with you or maybe even angry. Um, because that's how they do things and if you want to work there you should do things the same way as they do so they might say should as an easy relaxed way but they actually mean strong you must and it could also be the other way around so somebody might say to you you have to do something or you must 
do something. But what they actually mean is you have a choice and you don't have to do anything. And um, for example, um, if you hear some somebody say to you, oh, you'll have to tell me later. You'll have to tell me this later. Actually, they don't mean you have to do anything. Um, it just basically means um, it would be nice if you told me later. I mean, it sounds like you are excited about something or you are upset about something. And they maybe not ha they have the time to listen to you straight away. Um, so they'll say, oh, you'll have to tell me later. Um, it doesn't mean you have to. It means it would be nice if you did. Um, I would be interested if you wanted to talk to me later. Um, so it's not an obligation. And also, if somebody said, um, oh, you must come and visit this very soon. You must come and visit. Again, it doesn't, in British English, it doesn't really mean you must come and see them tomorrow um, or day after. It just means it would be nice if you came to see us sometime, um, anytime, you know, it would be nice. Uh, you still have a choice. Uh, so even though they say you must, you still have a choice. Um, okay, so um, I also um, taught you how to create um questions from these sentences so with should and with must you just take the modal verb and you put it in front of the sentence to make the question so you would say you would ask should you see a doctor okay or must you see a doctor okay but with um need to and have to the need to and have to stay in the sentence where they are and you just simply put do in front to make a question. So it would be, do you have to see a doctor or do you need to see a doctor? Okay. And the need to and have to always go together. The have plus two, always together. Okay. Um, so should you see a doctor? Must you see a doctor? But do you need to see a doctor and do you have to see a doctor and also when you answer the word that's in front of the question goes into the answer so if you have should you see a doctor you will have you will say yes you should or no you shouldn't um, must you yes you must or no you mustn't um but with do you have to or do you need to you say Yes, you do, or no, you don't. Okay, so that's how you make questions and that's how you make answers. So, this brings me to today's subject, which is da, 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 modal verbs. Okay, modal verbs. I know I can't hear you, but you are welcome to talk to the screen. You're welcome to talk to me through the screen. So tell me what modal verbs do you know? There are many. Practice practice your voice for, t for this morning. If you haven't spoken yet this morning, if you just got out of bed, practice your voice and just talk to the screen. What modal verbs do you know? I wish I could hear. You can write it in comments actually, if you want to. So like I said, there are many modal verbs and um, the problem with modal verbs is because there are so many of them uh, in English language um, when foreign people learn English um, they have issues with understanding how to use them um, because in your own language whether it's Spanish or French or Latvian or Russian um, you probably don't have so many modal verbs in your own language so when you learn the English, it's hard to understand how to use them properly and what the differences are. So that's why I will start talking about modal verbs more um, in my lessons um, to come as well. So now you've had time to think about what modal verbs you know. Here are some. Okay, so you have can, could, will, would may, might, must, uh, should, uh, ought to, um, not a very popular one but it's used in English, ought to, 
um, need to, have to, so those are, and there are more, but those are your sort of basic model verbs um, that you would use every day. Um, and today uh, I will focus on one, and that one is can. So how, when do you use the modal verb can? Okay, so first of all, you use can when you are offering something to somebody. Can I get you something? Can I go to the shop for you? Can I get you a coffee? So you are offering to do something for this person. Yeah. Can I do something for you? You can also say, may I get you a coffee or may I offer you something? So you can also use may, but when you use may, it sounds more like you are asking for permission almost. May I offer you a coffee? Is it okay if I offer you a coffee? So it's not quite offer, it's more like permission. And that brings me to number two. Uh, you use can when you are asking permission. Um, for example, you say, can I use your phone? Is it okay? Do I have permission to use your phone? Can I use your phone? Or can I use your recipe? I had dinner at yours, your place last week and the roast beef was absolutely amazing. Um, can I use your recipe for my dinner tonight? Is that okay? Do I have the permission? Okay. And then number three is you use can when you talk about ability. So to be able to do something. Okay. Can I do this? Can, can I learn French in 30 days? I mean, I've been trying. Um, I think I'm doing all right. Um, so... Can I, can I do this? Am I able to do this? Yeah, so you talk about ability. And the last one, you use can when you talk about possibility or impossibility. Okay, so um, possibility um, in general. Yeah. Like, for example, can it happen? It can happen in general. It can happen. It can be cold here in the winter. It doesn't mean it will be definitely cold. It doesn't mean that. It just means it can be in general. Um, last winter, it wasn't cold. But the winter before, that was very cold. So it can be cold in the winter. It's a possibility in general. Okay, That dog can bite. It doesn't mean it will bite. It doesn't mean that at all, it just can. There is the chance that it could bite you, okay? So just to practice this a little bit, um, I want you to talk to me again. <laughs> so I will give you a situation and you tell me what you will say or what you will ask in that situation. So situation number one, you see an old lady in the shop, in the supermarket, and she has heavy bags and she's really finding it difficult to carry those bags, to lift them. So you would go to this lady, you feel you're a nice person and you're having a nice day. So you go to this lady and you say, what would you ask? You would say, can I help you? Can I help you with that? Can I help you with your bags? Okay, so you are offering your help. Okay, so that's offer. Can I help you? Okay, situation number two. You get on the train and it's almost full and you want to sit down. So you walk up the carriage and you are looking for an empty seat. And there is one seat next to a stranger. Um, so you want to know... You want to sit there, but you want to know that if it's okay, if it's okay with them that you sit there. Um, so you would say, say to the stranger, what would you say to the stranger? You would ask, can I sit here? You asking permission, is it okay with this person that I take this empty seat? So can I sit here? It's permission, okay? 
So situation number three. You need to lift something that looks quite heavy, okay? Before you lift whatever it is that looks heavy, what do you ask yourself? What do you need to ask yourself? You would ask, can I lift this? Can I actually lift this? Okay. Am I able to physically? Okay. Can I lift this? So your ability to do something. Okay. And the last one, for example, you are, you're doing an exam, some exam, whatever exam, and you want to know, you ask the teacher if um, there are more than one possible, there is more than one possible answer to a multi, multiple choice question. Okay, so you want to know if there is more than one answer to a multiple choice question. So the teacher says, no, there can only be one answer. Okay, no, there can only be one answer uh, means it's impossible to have more than one answer. Okay, so possibility and impossibility. No, it's not possible to have more than one answer. You can only have one answer. Okay, so to practice a little bit more, I will ask you a question or tell you a sentence and you have to tell me if you think it's an offer or permission or ability or possibility impossibility okay so question or sentence number one can you lend me some money can you can you lend me some money what do you think which one is it it's ability yes it's ability are you able to lend me some money Okay, next one. Can it be that President Trump gets re-elected for another term? Can it be that President Trump gets re-elected for another term? What do you think that is? Is it ability? Is it permission? It's possibility or impossibility. Okay, second, uh, next one. Um, can I borrow your pen, please? Permission. That's right. Next one. Can I give you a lift home? Or can I give you a ride home? In my car. What's that one? It's offer. Yep. I can speak five languages. I can speak five languages. And that is my ability. I can do that. I am able to speak five languages. Okay. You can change the channel if you wish. I'm not watching the news anymore. You can change the channel. It's fine. And that is permission. Okay. I can go to the shop for you if you want. Yeah. I can go to the shop for you if you want. And that is an offer. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine my life without my children. I don't have any, I'm sorry. I have two cats and a dog. But I can't imagine my life without my two cats and my dog. And that is a general possibility, or I mean general impossibility, okay? I just can't imagine my life without them. General impossibility. Okay. Well, that concludes our lesson for today. Um, I hope you had fun and I hope you found it useful. And um, as always, if you want to um, get this material or see this material, um, just message me with your email address and I will send you a Word document with all the material that I've just covered. Okay. And thank you very much and hope you have a nice day. See you later.